Hello and welcome to day one of Strong and Calm, your 30-day yoga and meditation challenge. My name is Matt Giordano, and I want to first congratulate you for committing to your well-being in both body and in mind. Today's focus primarily is about finding a comfortable seated posture for meditation, but I'll also be taking you through some of the hip-opening asana practices, helping you to find some modifications and variations to best suit your practice. In order to do so, I've got some helpful props nearby. I have blocks, a strap, and a blanket. And in addition, I'll have a chair nearby. So if you, ha- if you can grab blocks, if you don't have them, you can use books. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt. And I'm sure that you have a blanket laying around your house and probably a chair. Let's begin the yoga practice by standing at the top of the yoga mat. Standing into dasana with the hands by your sides, soften the knees just a bit, and move the hips slightly back over the heels. Try to allow the weight of your pelvis to drop straight down into the center of the heels and lift up the base of your skull. With a gentle lift of the abdomen, begin the sound of ujjayi breath. If you're not sure what that is, it's just a simple whisper through the nose on the inhalation and on the exhalation. It's similar to fogging the mirror, the sound, but with the mouth closed. So we begin together, inhaling and exhaling. Close the eyes to get centered. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Gently open the eyes. Bend the knees and place your hands on your thighs. Have your feet about outer hip width apart. We'll warm up the legs a bit with chair pose, Utkatasana. And the way that I do chair pose is we move the knees back over the heels. With the knees back over the heels, gently press the back of the hamstrings apart from each other as if you're trying to separate the mat with your heels. What you'll feel is the back and the outer hip muscles engaging. Keeping those muscles engaged, press down into your hands, lift the abdomen and the chest up, lift the gaze horizontal to the horizon, and then reach the arms into a cactus-like shape. Spread the fingers Take a breath and open the shoulders. Now reach the hands up to the sky. Three more breaths to awaken the legs, to awaken the back, to awaken your energy. And on this last breath, sit a little bit lower, but lift up a little bit taller. And as you exhale, place the hands back on the knees. Option to grab the blocks and place the hands below the, uh, the blocks below the hands, and lift the chest up towards the, to the sky like you're doing a back bend. And press the back of your legs apart, just like you did in chair pose, so you feel the backs of your hamstrings opening up. And then from this position, begin to lift the back of your pelvis up towards the sky until you feel a gentle hamstring stretch. If you'd like to go deeper, you feel like you're um, in a a good position and your hamstrings aren't feeling much of a stretch, then you can take the blocks down. Also option for those of you that are a little more flexible to place the fingertips onto the ground. You don't have to straighten the knees all the way to get a nice hamstring stretch. It's just about the activation of lifting the buttock bones up in the backside and lifting the chest up in the front side. We'll take one more breath in this pose called Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. And exhale it out. And as you do so, place your fingertips back and step your right foot back so your left foot is forward. Optional modification here is to grab the blocks to keep the chest up a little bit more. And that will give you some more access to your hips. You press your front heel down into the ground and lift the hips up a bit. Each day, I'll be giving you more techniques, more actions in the body to find precision and to ultimately feel more strength and range of motion. But for today, just going through the different modifications that you could do with blocks 
and or with straps and blankets. So for right now, get lifted, get strong, push down into your front foot and lengthen through the top of the head. And again, if you want to go deeper in this posture, flexibility wise, you can take your fingertips towards the ground. If you want to take this posture deeper and strength wise, you take your hands to your knee and perhaps your arms out to the sides to increase the strength of the posture. One more breath here and release the hands to the ground. We'll step forward, halfway lift. Again, you can use the blocks the entire time underneath your fingers or your hands. Exhale, switch sides. Again, you have your options. Choose one that serves you best for today or just choose one and see how it feels afterwards. Press down into your feet, get lighter. If you want to make the pose a little bit stronger, again, hands on the knee or arms out to the sides will increase the strength of the posture by a lot. So if you need to place your hands back on your knee at any point in time, that's totally okay. Let's take one more full breath in together. And as you exhale, place the hands to the ground, step forward, halfway lift on the in-breath. And as you exhale, you'll step your right foot back again. This time, we'll turn the back heel down in a preparatory pose called Parsvakonasana. And the way that we'll start this is place a block on the inside of your foot on the highest height for now. And then place your forearm, your front forearm, on the thigh and bring your hand to your hip. With this posture as it is, find strength, which is different than uh, length. So instead of sinking down, which is a different action, I'd like you to push down, which is going to give you strength, lightness, and lift. And with that lift, you have a few options. Once you feel strong in the posture and your breath is starting to move and you feel a little bit more relaxed in the mind, then it's a good time to potentially take it deeper. In this case, we could take the top arm up to the sky. The bottom hand could come down to the block on any height that feels accessible for you, potentially all the way to the fingertips. But we want to make sure that we still can activate the front buttocks by pushing down into the ground. So if you have to kind of move your hips back and move the shape out of position, then uh, just bring the block up a height, okay? Let's just take one more breath, reach up through the fingertips. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the ground. We'll step forward on the half lift, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, step the opposite foot back and plant the heel down. So for the Parsvakonasana, we place the block, forearm on the thigh to start for the preparation. I press my front heel down into the ground. That'll also turn the hips a little bit, turn the belly. Once I feel strong in the foundation of pushing down through my heel, I can then turn my chest. There's also three options for the head. I could look to the sky if my chest feels like it's turned quite a bit. I could look to the sidewall and can also look down to the ground for greater balance. Once you feel balanced and you feel strong, option to take the block or onto your fingertips, depending on your flexibility and where you're at today. Let's take two more breaths in Parsvakonasana. If you'd like, you lift the top hand up to the sky. One more breath. Place the hand to the hip, all the way to the ground, and step forward. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, full Uttanasana. That might mean taking the blocks down a little bit and bowing in towards yourself. Lean your body weight into your hands so you feel some weight there. And with the weight in your hands, you can push the back of your legs out a little bit to engage the outer hips and move the hamstrings and sit bones apart from one another. That'll give you just a little bit more range of motion. Take a full breath in here in Uttanasana and a long breath out. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Place the blocks off to the sides, bend your knees, hands to your hips, and come to stand up. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fingertips to the ground or back to your blocks. Half lift, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step the right foot back, left foot will be forward. Inhale, step your left foot back to plank pose, fingers strong in the ground. Exhale, place the knees down either onto the yoga mat or onto a blanket for a little softness and come back to child's pose. 
Inhale, forwards, all fours. Arch the back and look up. Exhale, lift the hips up, downward facing dog. We'll do those poses again. Inhale, forward, plank pose. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. Inhale, forward, all fours, getting the breath moving. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale, forward, plank pose. Knees down, exhale, child's pose. Inhale, all fours, arch the back. Exhale, downward facing dog. And take your right leg to the sky on the inhale. And step the right foot outside of your right hand, placing the knee down onto the blanket or the ground. And for this lizard posture, you can take your blocks on the inside of the foot for the first modification. Perhaps just hands on the blocks. And my um, suggestion is to lift the hips up a little bit and pull the knees toward each other. We'll be going over that action quite a bit tomorrow, this action of pulling inward. But for today, just see if you can get a little bit of lift and lightness. Moving the back of the pelvis up will help you bring your elbows down as a potential option. And depending on where you're at in your practice, you may be capable of going deeper. The depth of this posture could eventually lead with a hand underneath, grabbing the outer ankle and coming on down lower. So take a, an appropriate posture for you where you feel a decent stretch in the hip, but not so much in the back. Let's take one more breath in. And one more breath out. Coming on up. Step back, downward facing dog. We'll go through that little movement of vinyasa. Inhale, forward to plank pose. Knees down, exhale, child's pose. Inhale, all fours, hands and knees, arch. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg comes on up, inhale. And step your left foot outside of your left hand, placing the knee onto the blanket. Again, you have your option for different heights of the blocks and, of course, hands or elbows. So, again, the actions I did here was just lift the hips up a little bit and tip the front of the pelvis down as the back of the pelvis goes up, which allows some more range of motion in the hips. Perhaps the elbows come to the blocks on any various height. And for the if you're a little bit more flexible, you can take the hand underneath and reaching for the outer ankle, bringing your chest closer to your foot. And it's important to know it's not about the depth of the posture uh, necessarily or the shape, but rather the mobility of your hips. So the posture doesn't necessarily represent mobility of the hips, but what you feel in the hip joint as you're doing the posture. Now that's something to be paying attention to. So feel the sensations as you stretch and make sure the sensation is in the hip, not the back. So the way you get it out of the back is you stick your buttocks up more. Keep a low back bend like an arch if you can and focus on motion of the pelvis or tipping of the pelvis. Coming on up out of this posture. With the hands out in front, you could use blocks here. Stepping forward to Malasana squat pose. Now, some structures, bone structures, allow for this posture to be easy and the heels to sit on down low. And other bone structures make this pose quite challenging. And it's important to know that that's not necessarily something about flexibility, but just about the bone structure. So if the heels don't come down all the way, no big deal. You can take a blanket. This is a bit short right now, but just for the sake of showing you, you can put the heels up on the blanket so you're able to do malasana with the heels on the blanket. And then lift the chest up, find a little length in the spine. We'll take two more breaths. And one more breath. Place the hands to the ground. Bring your blanket back to the center of your yoga mat. Bend your knees, hands on the hips, and rise up. Next, we're going to take the right ankle over the left knee for, uh, actually, I'm sorry, we'll bring the blocks off to the side of the yoga mat first, then the right ankle over the left knee for a standing version of pigeon pose. 
You can lift your right hip up and out to the right to tip the pelvis diagonally towards the side of your mat and place the hands on the blocks. Again, you have the option of what height the blocks are at. Um, you could also use, if the blocks are not high enough, you feel like your leg keeps slipping off, then you can use a chair or even a wall to put your fingertips on. It's primarily about this motion of the pelvis, which we'll be going quite over a bit in day three, how to move the pelvis a bit more for range of motion. But for right now, just finding a modification that is appropriate for you. Before you come up, you can walk the blocks back to center, maybe even off to the other side as you rise up to stand. Taking a breath in. And a breath out. Cross the opposite ankle over your knee, the left side now. Again, lift your left hip up and out to the left as you take your hands down onto the blocks. Should you choose to do this posture without the blocks, that's okay. Just but make sure that as you take your fingertips to the ground, that you're not dropping the left hip down. Keep the left hip upward so that you're maintaining the stretch in the left hip. Again, it's primarily about the movement or the mobility of your pelvis rather than rounding your back to get down. Better to put your hands up on a chair or a wall so you can keep an arch in the back and tip from the pelvic structure. Walking the blocks back to center and standing on up onto both feet into Tadasana. Let's take a breath in together and out. Bend the knees, Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, bow forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Step the opposite leg back from earlier, which is probably your right leg. Step back into downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank pose. Knees down, come to child's pose. Ye inhale forward, all fours, arch the back. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take the right foot up to the sky, inhale. And step the right foot outside of the hand, placing the knee down onto the blanket. With the left hand over to the left, now you have the option to use a strap. So... If it's easy for you, don't need a strap to grab the foot for a thigh stretch, then you can just go ahead and grab your foot. The thigh stretch can be quite challenging for most people. So what you'll do is you'll just take the strap, loop it around the foot, and then come back into the posture holding the strap. Then pulling the strap closer in towards your body uh, will initiate the thigh stretch. You'll also feel the front of your hip, your hip flexors engage. So here are the actions that I recommend to uh, create more depth, but also in a kinder way for the body. So the way we do this is we kick the foot back into the strap or into your hand, and that's called a facilitated stretch when you activate the same muscles that are stretching. With that thigh stretch and activation of the thigh, also pull the back knee towards the front knee so your back thigh bone lifts up which is an activation of the hip flexors. Since we have the, both the quadricep muscles and the hip flexor group activated and we're stretching, we're doing a facilitated stretch for both of these. Take one more breath, soften the, the eyes. And then exhale, release. We'll step back to all fours. Place the strap to the other side of the yoga mat, come into downward facing dog. It's a good time to just observe the sensations in your left hip and your right hip. Notice how things kind of shift as you do postures. This body awareness as you grow to understand and feel your body over the course of your yoga practice, this is the first gateway into a meditative practice to be able to feel the more subtle sensations of the body. 
Come forward to plank pose. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. Inhale, forward, all fours, arch and look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take the left leg to the sky. Step the left foot outside of the left hand and place the knee down onto your soft blanket. Again, here we have the option to take the strap, slide it underneath, and with your left hand, you can grab the strap. On this side, I'll show without the strap in case that's better for your practice. Easier to grab the foot, you track the knee towards the uh, center of your right buttocks. Now, as you take the thigh stretch, again, the options that I recommend most in this are that not only are you kicking your foot back into your hand or your forearm in my case here, but you're also pulling your back knee forward. You also notice that the posture that I'm choosing is that my chest is more facing the front of the yoga mat rather than the side like a twist. And this is just to open up the psoas as well as um, the quadriceps and the other hip flexors. If it's hard to do this posture with the hand off to the side, you of course may use a block underneath to keep yourself more lifted. Let's take one more breath in this thigh stretch. And exhale, release. Come to all fours, arch the back and look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll roll through one time, plank pose, inhale. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. Inhale, all fours, arch the spine, look up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take a moment to observe what the practice created so far for ourselves and feel the sensations in the hips, sensations in the back. And then slowly come forward, place the knees onto the ground. Last posture we'll do is just to open up the ankles. You can tuck your toes, bring the ankle bones together. And what I recommend is you bring your heels. I take one hand and I actually literally move the heel back and then the other heel back and come to sit up. Now, if this posture is challenging on the toes and you can't get the ball mounds of the feet to touch, what I recommend is placing a couple of more blankets underneath the knees. It makes it easier. You could even use two blocks under each knee, one block underneath each, each knee. And then we just say here, and what I'd like you to do is press the toes down into the ground. We'll do this practice again tomorrow, just activating the soles of the feet. Um, and as you activate the soles of the feet, we start to release the energy back downward towards the ground and start prepping, prepping ourselves for a more easily seated position for meditation. We'll take one more breath here, pressing your toes down into the ground. And exhale. So this posture in particular is a nice preparation as you point your feet and sit on back onto your heels. And we'll prep for the first of three seated postures called uh, Virasana. So this one is to open up the ankles to gain some uh, flexibility at the fronts of the shins. And what I'm doing actively is flicking the toes down into the yoga mat in order to activate the shin muscles. Again, that's called a facilitated stretch when you activate the muscles that are stretching. And it's important to know that this also could be really intense. And I should mention that with your feet, um, with your knees on a blanket in this particular position, it could make it more intense than if your knees are off. Um, versus the other way around when the toes were flexed underneath, it's actually less intense if the knees are up higher. We'll take one more breath. And then come on out of it. So this concludes the uh, first asana practice, um, just finding the modifications and the variations for your yoga practice. And what I'd like to go over with you now are the three 
specific seats that you can use for meditation. And I'll make sure that you have a chair nearby, some blocks, again, books are fine as well, um, some blankets and some pillows. And we'll get started with this first posture called Virasana. For Virasana option one, just a simple one block. We take the block underneath the sit bones with the knees fairly close together, but it doesn't have to be squeezed together and the feet pointed. This posture is great if you are flexible in the quadriceps and in the ankle joints, but it can be really challenging on the knees. It can be challenging on the ankles over time if you sit for a long period of time. So a modification and a variation that I really love and I highly recommend is that we use two blocks and we take about two to three blankets in front. Now, the blankets should be approximately the height of the first block when your knees are on it. And what this does with the blankets in front of the blocks is it allows for less stretch at the front of the shin. So less uh, ankle mobility is required. In addition, it's softer on the shins and it's less pressure on the knees. So this is a really great variation of Virasana and you feel a little bit higher up off the ground. So it feels a bit lighter. And uh, ultimately, if you feel more comfortable, it's going to be easier to get into our meditation practice. For the next variation after Virasana, the next thing I recommend is trying Sukhasana. For this variation of Sukhasana, this posture is called easy seat, but it's ironically one of the most challenging seats for most people. So um, rather than just seated cross-legged position, I highly recommend for everybody to make sure that you've got some blankets and some blocks in order to sit in this position. And if you don't have blocks, also um, more pillows are just uh, welcome just to keep the knees lifted. So what I have is four blankets. Um, you can experiment with the height, and I'll explain in a second how high up we want to be. But when we sit and we cross the legs at the shins, the height of the knees, we want to be about the height of the hips. But when I let my knees drop down, one of my legs, I'll feel that there's a bit of a a little bit of a stretch in the hip flexor. Now the sensation is about a one and a half for me, so it's very little. However, a one and a half over a course of 15 minutes can easily turn into a 10. So what I like to do here is just support right underneath the thighs with a soft block. If the block is too hard, it could cut off the circulation, be uncomfortable as well. So I use a soft block so that the knees are not hanging on by my flexibility. And I tip my pelvis slightly forward and approximately, again, the knees and the hips are about at the same height. If the knees are above the hips, it automatically tips the pelvis backwards, causing a posterior tilt, which would then require either a lot of hip flexor strength or back and hand strength, shoulder arm strength, to keep yourself lifted. And that's not something that we're necessarily going for. We use the strength in the asana practice, and we try to find a calm seat so that we can focus on our meditation practice. The next posture that I have for you is seated up on a chair. So grab your chair. What I have for this variation for sitting on a chair are two blocks, a chair, and a blanket. And I'll explain the purpose of each of these. First, sitting up on a chair without any of those. I wanna sit on the edge of the chair not quite to the edge, but closer to the edge of the chair so that the feet can be resting on the ground comfortably. And then I just want to take note in this position with the height of this chair and my body height, my knees are a little bit below the hips. Again, that can be a bit tiring on the hip flexors. So what I can do is I take two blocks and place the feet up on the blocks. However, these blocks are a little bit tall for me. So what that does is it tips my body backwards a little bit. So the solution here, which is quite a nice one because it also provides a bit more comfort, 
is to use a blanket or two or any uh, amount that is going to allow the knees and the pelvis to be approximately at the same height with the feet resting comfortably on the blocks or the ground. So in this case, I've got two blocks, blanket, and a chair. And for me, I could sit here for a long period of time and feel fairly comfortable in my body. So again, these are the three postures. We have seated Virasana, hero's pose, with either one block or two blocks and blankets. And we have Sukhasana with blankets and two blocks or pillows underneath the knees. And then we have seated in a chair with two blocks and a blanket. So what I recommend is to try these three out a few times before we practice again tomorrow and find the one that is best suited for you and make sure that you have those props available to you tomorrow when we practice. It's been a pleasure to share with you today. I look forward to day two when we're going to get started with the earth practice. See you tomorrow.